to like the whole shirt and everything. Yeah. Hello, folks. Well, we're not out in the forge doing the intro today because I've already been out of the forge, came in and got cleaned up because we're having our Christmas today. Um, got to show off my shirt a little bit. Smithosaurus, a gift from my oldest son and uh, his family. Yeah, I feel about as old as a T-Rex some days. But anyway, no knife work today. Um, can't very well show pictures of the knives I've been making for folks for Christmas presents. And didn't want to start any new builds today when I can only have part of a day to work because we're having our Christmas get together. So I went back to my roots and picked up an old, an old project, um, like some of the stuff I used to do when I was doing mainly artistic smithing. And we had some mixed success with that. Um, even this video is kind of a mixed success. But stick around and let's see what kind of mess I got made. Okay. I'm uh, just scrubbing off some crud and going to taper the end of this piece of bar stock. And let me preface the rest of this video by saying that I haven't done this particular project in many years. And this piece of steel I rooted up out of the trash. And it's almost rusted down to nothing as it is. Um, this project that we're going to be doing, I prefer to use um, 16th or 8th inch thick stock. And this is rusted to the point that it's much less than 8th inch. But... It's what I've got, and it's more or less just practice, so we're going to piddle around and see what ha what happens. And it's really tough when you start trying to forge something that's this thin because it always wants to fold and twist and do things that it shouldn't be doing. All right, so we've got it drawn out thinned on the end. Now we're just going to bend it over. Get a good square corner. And we're going to go to the vise. And I have just a piece of uh, flat bar with a quarter inch, piece of quarter inch round stock welded on the center. And we're just going to bend our stock back around that. And what we're doing is making a nice little piece for our drift to lay. And lay our drift in the little, that stupid thing wants to fall out. Right, get in there. There we go. And we've got our drift in there. Forged around. Get everything pulled up tight like it should be. Eh, it'll do. Get our drift out. Now we're going to flux this and forge weld it. If you haven't figured it out yet, I'm making a set of hinges. It's really light stuff. Just get light, quick blows of the hammer to set that forge weld. And give it another pass at welding heat. Make sure it's stuck. This is, this is pretty cruddy old steel. It's it, it's welded, but yeah, I'd been much happier with a piece of new eighth inch bar stock, but it'll be okay. So we'll drift our hole back out. Now that drift's just a piece of quarter inch round stock that I've uh, ground down on both ends. And that's just to size the hole. And this is actually our second strap I didn't bother to bore you with the uh, heating and thinning and bending. We're doing our forge weld passes on our second strap. Mm. And another forge welding pass. Now, with this stuff being like it is, sometimes it's really hard to blend that forge weld in because it's so thin and you don't want to overforge it and thin it too much. And you see it pop up there. Um, I actually gave it one more forge welding pass uh, with some more flux and fixed it. 
And now we're going to drift our hole out. Had some camera issues, so I lost part of our processes today. But anyway, you get the idea of what we're doing here. Now to make one side of our hinge, I'm gonna take a chisel and cut out the center. Just make a mark and get it hot. Clean it up a little bit. Let's get that mark a little deeper. That's not quite right yet. Make a good mark so I can see it when it's hot. There we go. That's a little better. Now I'm gonna cut the chisel through. And then I'll go to the bandsaw and cut through the eye of the hinge and break that center part out. Yep, yep. Now I've cut the, the end of the hinge on an angle and I'm just forging it around to a point or trying to. Again, this stuff is so thin and just way too rusty to actually be doing this with, but eh, it's okay just for a proof of concept. Forge it out to a point and set it down over the face of the anvil. Gonna make kind of a spade end on this. Man, this stuff's hard to work. Mm. Drop forged it. Work our taper back. Yeah, I'm probably gonna have to redo this video in the future with some decent stock. So you can actually see what's going on. There we go. It's getting pretty close. Now the other end I'm just gonna Cut on the bandsaw and bend around a little bit. But you can see there's our uh, spade end for the strap side of the hinge taking shape. I could do two of those and just make a regular strap hinge. What you can do as far as hinge making with this process is eh, it's just limited to your imagination. Do a little planishing. And slide the pin in because I had a camera malfunction and lost the bit where I worked the other side. Put the pin in, pinned it over, and there's the hinge. And it works just like a hinge. So, if you're still here, well, God bless you for sticking around through a miserable video. But, um, here's our finished project product. Needs a squirt of oil. And really should warm it up a little bit with a propane torch and put a little wax on it. And that'll help lubricate the joint, too. Um, all in all, it's not terrible for having been forged out of a piece of junk that was lying in the, out in the weather for God knows how many years. Um... My hinge joint should be a little tighter. That's my mistake. But not too bad for not having made anything like this in years. Anyway, thanks for watching. God bless and have a Merry Christmas.